Hey, how's everybody doing today? So I wanted to make a video for this uh, piece of software here called Color Constructor. And, you know, I was on YouTube and anybody that's YouTube before, you know, sometimes it's, it might be those lonely nights or those, just those nights you feel like I'm just going to click, click, click. And that's what I did. And I somehow stumbled upon into this software and uh, it tickled my fancy. And I wanted to know more, and there wasn't too many videos uh, on it uh, on YouTube. There's a wonderful one, uh, and I'll link that in the description as well. As well as uh, this is, I, I would like to say unfortunately, but it is only $7. So if what you see here, maybe you do some research on your own, you find out that that is something you're interested in. Really 7 bucks for what this is, uh, or what this could be for you, I really don't think is... Um, it's that much. It's not. Uh, however, everybody's monetary uh, situation is a little different than everybody else. So be that as it will. So what this is, is um, from my understanding. Now, I'm not a big... I, I don't know as much as I should about color at work. I do color more than my comic book work, uh, big time. Everything I do at work, uh, it's because it's video games, has to be color. So I've, I've tried my best to sort of learn on the fly, as well as read books when I can. Uh, but color theory and color in general, is it's, it's a very... You guys all know, I'm hoping, uh, you ladies as well. It's a very complicated subject, and the understanding of it is, is just as vast, as deep as any other medium we're going to get into. Uh, anatomy, storytelling, comics in general, right? So when I saw this software, I thought it was really cool. So what it is, is imagine each one of these colors here on these orbs uh, are, are the color that uh, you, you'd like to paint in your piece or or what have you. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you this uh, first, uh, but right here, whoops, got the wrong window open. Uh, we've got this that we've been working on and it's, it's a little bit of a hot mess. I'm going to show you a little bit when we get in there of uh, how I'm going to apply what we're going to do, what I'm going to show you this software does uh, onto this pinup here that we've been working on. And I'm hoping it'll, it'll work. This has all been experimental for me as well. It's been uh, a fun just spending a few, uh, the you know, the half hour, hour I get every now and then just noodling with the software. Um, and, it, and it's really cool. And hopefully something will click for you guys too. And I hope the image will turn out as well. <laughs> so what it is, is again, so imagine these are your, your colors. And I'm going to talk about this in comic book terms, uh, not concept art and painting, because that's a world that I'm not as, I don't say I'm not as comfortable in, but I don't paint. I, I do, but I don't really uh, paint with you guys. It's more of like private stuff just to like, just to, you know, have fun to break out uh, and warm up in the day. So when I saw this sort of stuff here, these uh, swatches uh, over here that you can see on the colors, that was very interesting to me because you can see, and you guys have seen this all over the internet if you ever looked for color or tried to color like a Superman picture or something like that. You're looking for like a blue, a red, and a yellow, right? So actually, let's do that. I'll, I'll show you here. Um, just to back up very quickly before we do that, I just want to uh, explain what the hell this is, and you'll see once we get into sliders, but imagine in each one of these little objects, and you can make more, uh, these are your colors, your flats, right? And over here, this is where it's like the game-changing sort of stuff, is you can start changing what the light color is and the ambient. Ambient is like the light that's in the room. If you think about a good example that I, at least my understanding of it is, imagine you're in your, uh, your whatever room during the afternoon and you've got like yellowish blinds. So the sun's pouring in and it's usually like a whitish light, right? It's coming in, but that light's getting filtered through the blinds and it creates an ambient yellowish hue to uh, everything in your room. Now, what makes that so cool? Well, I'll show you. So let's go up here. I'm going to click here. Let's use, um, just for the sake of this, we're going to be putting uh, the colors that I have that you guys previously saw in that pinup in here as well. But I'm going to try to make a, like a Superman sort of uh, color scheme. A lot of his stuff is like, maybe we'll go like a darker red here. Uh, this blue, maybe we'll bring that down. We don't, we don't need to go pure saturation. And down here, actually, we can use that for like his skin color. We'll say that's a skin color. And then here we'll say the yellow, you know, like the emblem on his chest. Yellow is really hard to work with, but that's fine, right? So imagine these are your flats. They've also got like these little buttons here. You guys might enjoy looking at that a little, a little better. I'll leave those two up there, cubes, so you can see, see these as spheres as well. 
So this would be my flats. I plop this in, and anybody that's done any kind of coloring work, uh, if you've followed my channel, the way I work is I'll put the flats in, and then I'll put like one pass of like purple or something for shadows, and then change that to multiply, and it harmonizes all the colors, and that's great. Uh, it's very quick, which is a, a huge plus, especially when you're doing comics. Uh, but again, this is still very useful uh, because I'm going to show you why very, very quickly here. So. This is the setup we have, so we can actually change the light, right? So maybe we want to go with the light coming from the sun or whatever. We'll keep it white just so you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, but the ambient one, maybe this is where I was saying we go into the yellow, like there's blinds in the room, right? Now, as I slide this, what you're going to see happen is inside, you can notice it's it's very easier to, it's much easier to see it on the, the, the other side of it here. You can see what's happening. The colors themselves, like look how nice that looks. Just by turning it green, look at how like that like that feels good, you know. And like, even this one feels good. The skin color and stuff started looking a little bit like a zombie and all that. But what it's doing is it's actually manipulating the colors the way they should. And what's interesting, and this is where the learning aspect comes in. And this is like you know again, uh, colors throw me through a loop. I think we've beaten that to death, but. This here, this color here, this red, this blue, this tan color, these are all the same colors, but this is how it looks with this lighting effect, right? So you might be asking, okay, this is cool, this is, you know, whatever, that's fine, whatever, but let's say maybe we wanted, like, I don't know, here, here's a good example, there's some presets here, let's go through that. So we can look up at, like, a sunset. So look what skin color actually looks like in, in this environment of a sunset. The light is the, the red from the, the sun going down, you know, and the blue or the darkish color, that's the lack of light coming from anything, right? Like without a moon or a light or a sun, sorry, everything gets darker, right? So you can see how everything's getting affected. You can change your background color too if you like to really see some stuff get a little punchy or if you want to change the color, uh, you can do that as well, okay? So what's awesome about this and what I'm hoping some of you guys are starting to see is all I need to do is I can save these scene settings, okay? What that means is just say we're doing nightclub scenes. Maybe you're doing like a story that involves nightclubs. You want to get the nightclub colors down, and this would be the, the colors in the nightclub, right? That means we can plug in any flat color that we would want in here for a character like Superman or something. And when they're in that environment, these are the colors you got to use. That's it. And, and you're fine. And you can adjust the light intensity, you know, and exposure. We're going to get into doing this a little bit uh, together here in a second. Um, hopefully you guys can see that organically uh, go as well. Uh, you can put in your own hex key colors there if you want to change some of the colors in here. Okay, so that's the, the one of the really slick things as well. Uh, the other one is where was that right here swatches so when i click here this is really slick you can export your swatch colors right so all you need to do is export that and then i can i go ahead and color with that i don't necessarily need this open all the time right you can save this and you know that every time you go in you can do that um another good example is you can save like the colors we have open now as like superman colors right so maybe the next one we're going to do up here maybe uh warm light let's take a look at that Ooh, okay so this is sort of this is feeling weird right like starting to feel maybe a little zombie-ish <laughs> i don't know why i keep saying zombie a lot of it looks like uh you know maybe because it's yellow but we can change the background color to some stuff you know and it, like that looks good that looks like it's not a zombie kind of a feel because of the green but the colors are the same, right? So what I can do is, I'm hoping you guys are starting to see what we can do here, is we can start pulling in colors for characters and they'll all harmonize into a, into a, a color scheme. And that's, that's huge. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to show? Oh, man. I can't remember what the other one was, but there's another feature that was just added. You can add a secondary light, and this is where things kind of, like a rim light. You can kind of see up there, right? So maybe now, you know, this is like Miami or something. I don't know why I'm thinking of Miami or whatever. But you can really start to play around with, like, what's a secondary light? Maybe the cops are here, right? <laughs> so we got blue coming there, and maybe we're going to go with, like, a hot red from the sirens kind of coming over here. Uh, and the light at night, maybe it's like, a, it's like a, you know, it's pretty, the moon's pretty bright that night. So you can see, like, look at how nuts this, like, I wouldn't have thought, like, the skin color looks fine there, the yellow, like, that yellow looks nice and rich, like, there's a lot of colors going on in there, right? Maybe we can just bring these back down from cubes, and you can kind of see, like, what's happening, and that's powerful, this is very powerful stuff, and you can see, sometimes, not really, uh, let's see if we can, light too intense, you can really jack that light up there, yeah, ambient one, maybe turn that down. 
But do you see, like, the power of just, like, even with sliders on this? And the other, this is what it was that I was trying to say, is you can actually experiment with colors uh, and start to find some wild stuff, you know? Like, maybe our light, check this out. We can, like, start bringing in, like, let's just bring things blue. Right? And this is very, this is where it gets interesting. So it's a very red light. Blue, you can kind of see red's totally washed out. Yellow's washed out. And tan's washed out, right? Like, you can really start experimenting with some of the colors that you got going on here and it's i'm hoping anyway this is starting to show or you know that things can get a little bit more freeing for somebody that doesn't really understand colors such as myself i can do sliders in this and start to see things applied in a different way and uh for me I, I, I like to call it a game changer again because i can take this and maybe you like to just do traditional painting or you want to start with something simple right you can just plug in uh, you know, maybe you want to work with, uh, here, let's try this here, uh, th these reds, even though they're all like exclamation mark, which I mean, or this one might be better down here, the range here, you could take this swatch, right here, the dark red that's here, even though it's yellow, the, the label's messed up, and you could just paint with that, get like a monochromatic feel to sort of things, right? So, that's that, let's go ahead and we're going to do a reset, yep, I'm sure, and what we'll do is, I'm going to try and... I'll show you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do this off screen here, uh, just to save up some time here. So, this is the illustration we're going to do, and this is the workflow I, I tend to work no matter what. There's this harsh red on everything, and the reason for that is it just makes it so I can see the shadows a little bit better. My, the idea I'm trying to go with this image is we've got like this big sun back here, but I'm not sure yet. Jessup King is like a... Um, I like to call it science fantasy, like Star Wars. It's not really sci-fi. There's a lot of fantasy kind of stuff in there. But the, 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 the yellow sun, uh, even here on Earth, right, like it's normal. I want to see how some of his colors tend to look with maybe like a blue sun or, or a purple sun, you know. And it's going to cast like a lot of shadow on him. So I like to put just this hue saturation layer and desaturate it so it turns everything black and white. Don't worry about any of that. It's just a red. This is for me. It's I can block in shadows, right. You can turn the opacity down so you can see. But I'm going to show you why, why I separate this stuff myself. It's just the workflow I'm used to. If I turn the hue off, this is the, the flats. I've already done the flats, right? And you put the shadows on there, it makes it like a hot mess, right? But how I would normally work, and what you guys are used to, is this color here. I'm just going to lock the transparency. I would normally go with like a purplish blue, right? And it's like we're up here. It's not very really saturated. We're just going to fill that in. And then I would change this to multiply. And it feels good. Like I always, I I always enjoy this look. This 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 look to me always feels. I don't want to say like home, but it, it feels like it's a little bit more artsy than it. I don't want to say than it really is, because you know arts whatever. But you can adjust the you know your opacity and stuff like that, and it's done. You know that's really cool. But what this little extra thing does is hopefully we're gonna see an improvement over that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool. I'm going to select uh, his colors here. And I believe, can you open it? Okay. You, um, oh, gross. Okay, so what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm just going to pause the video and open up Photoshop here, okay? One second, you guys. Okay, we're back in Photoshop. The reason why I had to switch, uh, I'm... I should have done this before I recorded, but when we click on a color in Photoshop, it gives us a hex key, okay? Uh, I didn't, what I saw in Manga Studio was it was like this stuff. It was like written down here, and I don't want to have to do all that stuff. So I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to copy here, okay? So we got the hex key, and then we're going to open up Color Constructor, and right up here, I'm just going to highlight that, paste it in, hit enter, and right away we've got the blue that his shirt would be, and this is the natural uh, default lighting setting in there, okay? So I'm going to do this one more time just to show you guys. Okay, so we got that. Let's do his skin here. I'm going to copy this again. Back into color constructor, and I'm going to go down here with this one just because it's, it's already the skin color that's there. Click it. So you can see it's a little bit more pale. It's not as rich as that last one was, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pause the video again and just get the rest of the flats set up and I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, that didn't take too much time. Uh, so I just wanted to show this too. I was going to do this on my own, but uh, show it with you guys as well. So I'm going to click Save As here and what I'm going to put are... Let's just get rid of all that. Jessup King... 
flats. This will save it uh, into the appropriate folder, which, you know, you don't worry about that, uh, which is cool because now every time I close this, open it, I can just go load Jessup King. Boom, all these are here. Uh, the, the screen size is very small on the small Cintiq that I'm working on, so I've had to crush some things in here. That's why there's some overlap going on here with the swatches, but please just uh, excuse that. Uh, and the last thing, again, we can do the the um, the saving light. And, I, and I'm not sure if I reiterated this enough to you guys, but I just want to say it one more time. Imagine right now like the, this pinup that I'm doing, right? So let's just say you're doing a comic book and, you know, the, it takes place in two scenes, the whole book. One is inside a spaceship and the other one's on a planet. Once you figure out the, the lighting that you want, right, you can just save it in this guy. And any color you drop in here is always going to work with that light. That's why it's so important. It just starts to add a little uh, little panache to your art uh, without, I guess, um, having to think about it too, too much. And then you can always adjust things later. Anyway, okay, so this is the default lighting that we currently have in the scene. So I want to imagine, um, like I said, I want to play with the light coming from uh, the, the sun in this case, you know, like, so it's a, it's a whitish, it's a, it's a very bright, bright sun. What color? Um, maybe we could try, like I said, let's actually try even though I know I said I didn't really want to, but let's bring some warmth into it, right? Like, and I'm trying my best to get rid of any of those exclamation marks. The reason why, uh, if you look, when I bring this way up here, the exclamation starts to show up, from my understanding, is because they start to look the same. They're very, very similar in saturation, hue, and all that good stuff. So just slightly bringing it down. You don't always have to do this. It's, everything's always up to you, right? Um, but you can see, like, these, all of them coming out the dark now because it, those just don't make sense. Uh, Mathematically, the color doesn't make sense, right? So maybe we could saturate it just a little bit. So this would be kind of going into that warm light. Let's see what happens if the sun became, yeah, see, like this is where it starts to get really wild. Like, boom, that sun is just producing some serious heat. So yellow is, you know, it's like the cold stuff. I don't want the image to be have a cold feeling. I do want it to be a little bit warm and inviting. So like greens, yellows, and reds are really where we're gonna be going. Green is actually interesting. It It's turning a lot of this stuff straight green uh, if it's this bright, you know? Um, and we can always tone it back. And you see even right here how that, that looks nice. A lot of green, even though you would think because it's blue, right? But we can just play around with it. And that's what a lot of this really is, is just, just playing around uh, with a good chunk of it. The background, I'm going to go to like a medium gray. That's what I like to start at, so I know where I can push and pull the values. So this is sort of where it's looking. It's it's not as warm as I'd like it to be. I wonder if we really increase this color. You can see, like, look at that. It's starting to get a little icy. It's not, not too crazy. And one thing I've always had to do when I or that I have been doing uh, now that I've noticed with the software is I I know he's got a blue costume, right? So I'm always trying to adjust this light to go into the the flat color that I've put in there. And that's not the way you want to be doing it because what would act, what those colors actually look like in these situations is what it's showing. Um, and that's where it's like the learning kind of comes in because it's 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 a different way of thinking. So I don't want things to be too let's see if we see like I can punch up some I, I do want it to be, you know, pretty fun looking. I, I don't want it to be you know, we do want this red, this kind of like a hot Maybe we just try this. We'll just try this. What the hell? Okay. Now the background color, like I said, it's it's a medium tone. Uh, I know I do want it to be washed out a little bit, so we can just slide it around, see what feels good. Maybe the background feels good with the bluish green background. Start coming this way, and it's you know I don't want this. I don't want my background to start bleeding in with like the face and and all that. Um, I'm looking to the side here. The rock looks kind of cool. To be a little bit more like maybe something here. Hmm. Let me just bring it back into like the grayish a little bit. Hmm. 
Okay. So this here, we're getting some exclamation marks. I'm, I'm going to leave it though. It's okay because this is what I normally do. Um, if you were painting, I guess going to the five swatches would be good for me. Uh, you know, this, this is more than fine. Uh, this is exactly what I need here. Uh, normally I would just use like a screen, screen grab to get this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel these so you guys don't have to see all that. And then we're going to be back in Photoshop. Okay. One second. Okay, so we're back here. Um, we're already 20 minutes into this video. I, I honestly didn't think it was gonna take this long, but way she goes. All right, so as you can see here, so I just wanna zoom in and show you guys what we did here. So I got my colors here. They're feeling kind of greenish, but we'll see how it goes. Again, this is all experimental. We can see, you know, we're just learning as we go. So I've already labeled everything. It's got all its things there, so I don't have to think too much about it. Uh, I did take a screenshot here because this is what I wanted to keep. This is at least the way I've been doing this. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure if it's right or not, but you know, that's how we go. Uh, I didn't talk about how I have the layers set up here. So let me just turn everything off. Um, this was all done in Manga Studio like you guys saw, but I've got the flats for these birds. Uh, that should actually be filled in back there, but that's fine. Um, Jessup King's in there and as well as the sectioned off backgrounds so that I can individually go in there and select them without them excuse me falling into uh, the magic wand hands of, of another layer so the light source we have was this and as you look it's not very saturated so I'm actually kind of concerned uh, but we're gonna see how this goes so I'm gonna turn my magic wand tool on and turn off sample all layers so when it selects it and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer above this because I don't want to lose the flats that I have Okay, I'm just going to turn that off for now. And then the ambient one, this is sort of like our background color. Or sorry, I actually have... Hmm. Did the background actually... Here, let me... Just, sorry. I don't think that... Like, the background doesn't affect the actual uh, colors themselves. Okay. So that's cool. Because the reason I wanted to know that is because, like, oh, God. It, like, you know, I had some blue stuff, but that's just for our eyes now that I know that that's good so I'm going to select the ambient one that what this is going to be is our actual background color so what I can do here is I'm just going to play a have a little liberty here uh, I'm going to use this as our mid ground actually let's do our foreground with this color okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start to bring it up here and start to go into the yellow just a little bit uh, as we fade back here. Okay, so make another layer. Put that. And I'll go up a little bit more. And again, all this can be adjusted. All experimental. It's all good. I'm gonna grab all of our background here. Okay, should be good. Just fill that in there. So how's the sun look now that it's okay, so that's a concern just based off what I had done here. But so we've got our yellow here. So what I need to do is if we look here, this is our, our light. This is how uh, extreme I went with it. And then this is as far as the, the darkest thing is. So that means what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually, I'm not going to go as far back as I was with these guys. So I'm just going to lock it, lock this one. I'm just we're slowly creeping it up here uh, and the idea here is that it should still make the sun pop a little bit brighter so there's a lot of yellow going on right now I like I'm not a fan <laughs> to be absolutely honest with you but we'll see where this goes uh, and, and how we fix it up here so let me just do a quick save now this is what's interesting okay because yeah this yellow looks kind of nasty with the flats we have here but once I start throwing on these colors hopefully things start playing nice with one another <laughs> okay so let's start off with the uh, Jessup's fate or his skin color here so I'm just gonna select all of his flesh color there now what I'm going to do this is what I've been doing is I pick the middle tone uh, and then the shadow is usually this darker one but it, it's a little too dark sometimes so what I'll do is I'll actually drop the opacity and you'll see that um, but I do like saving this front one sometimes because that gives me if I ever wanted to do a highlight which I don't normally do uh, but sometimes I'll just use I, I only do two stages right the flat and a shadow at least the style that I'm doing I don't really do highlight work um, so sometimes this front color will work if I want it very saturated and this other one's a little bit more muted you know what 
we're going to try that. We're going to try that. Why not? It's a little fun here. So we're going to go skin. We're going to pick that color. I'm going to make a new layer and just fill that in there. So you see, like, that's, like, he's, I'm going to go down one here. Like, that's almost Simpsons yellow. And the background's actually really competing with this. But we're going to do a quick fix on that as well. Uh, but that's what the ambient light does, right? It makes everything, it's filling it with yellowish hue, uh, which is very interesting. So let's grab his blue shirt here. We're going to do the exact same thing. This is the middle one this time. See? Yellow into blue starts making it green. So we can start to see this stuff actually happening. You're going to really see it here on the pinstripe. But I just find this so interesting. It's not like I, when you do look into color, a lot of this stuff, you're like, of course. <laughs> if you start adding yellow to things, of course that's what it's going to look like. But it's not until you actually get in there and start manipulating colors that, I don't know, I've just found it absolutely fascinating where what I think it should be is not <laughs> even close to what it is. Um, So we got here, we're gonna have his pants. See, like there's so much, and I didn't really see this when we were in there, but like you can see like the color form from him is being, it's very washed out now. The last thing we got, we have to do here is his red. I'll just turn off his flats underneath so we can see kind of what's going on here. So you can see, I'll just turn that back on for the other options there. So, like I say, it's uh, the colors are all there. And if you look, I mean, it does sort of look like you just wash it out with yellow. So let's take a quick look. Like, why was that? Was it because our light here was still flashed out? Like, what if we brought it back up? Did that improve it? Um, was this just too saturated? Does this stuff need to be brought back down a little bit? You know, I'm actually going to keep this background gray because I don't want that... Uh, it's getting yellow because of the ambient light. But you know, like, these are some really fun things to just think about to get in here. But yeah, I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time here. So, um, oh, uh, so what I will do here is I'll just actually show you the, the, the last step. Um, and then I'm going to quickly show some examples, just two examples of stuff I've done with this already. Uh, and it, it's not... Um, it's nothing stellar. It's just it's changing the way I look at color, and you know I'm I'm beating a dead horse with this stuff. But I just really uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy enjoy this to the point where you might just want to try experimenting with it. And like I say, even though right now like I'm like I think this is pretty failed. It's very yellow. It's not what I'm looking for. Um, that's not the program's fault at all. It's my understanding of what's going on. It's it's changing the way I look as opposed to just going, well, this is red, this is blue, this is green, right? And it's like, no, they, they, they change because of the environment they're in. Uh, really quickly, I'm just going to put a hue saturation layer. See, like, so I can just do this on the fly anyway, just to sort of, like, even, like, bring it a little bit more red. It's not bad. It's sort of got, like, this old Jetson sort of, like, 70s-style cartoon look to it going on right now. Which is funny because of all this <laughs> yellow that's there. Actually, I wonder. I'm gonna fill that in with black. There we go. So we can still get the yellow light coming in here on him. So what I would do is right here we've got our our nasty. Remember this was red before. Uh, let's make it red again so you guys can see see it. Lock the transparency. Whoops. There you go. This is what it looked like when it was nice and nasty and red, just so I could see it. So what I would do is just start hacking away. So I make sure this layer's on, and because I have my flats that we already did, I'm gonna start with, okay, so we'll say the boots. So if I hold control and click on the layer, you can see them highlighted. And I can go up here and just eye drop the tool and Alt Backspace, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna fill it in because we're already on that shadow layer. And then you just creep your way up and just do, uh, what is this, pants? You just do this all the way through. Pinstripe. This is his shirt. This one's really dark. And watch what happens when we get to his, his skin color here. This is going to get real gross. Or it might actually look good. Who knows? 
Oh, the birds. So there you go. Um, like, it actually, I don't, you know, <laughs> as much as I was like, ah, it's gross, I still don't really like it, to be honest, because it is so dark, but we can always change dark. Dark is, is a problem that we're, that's okay to have. But if you look at it, like, even still, the colors harmonize. Uh, at least to me, they do. I wonder if, if we turn off this adjustment where we, layer we made, and if you look at it, it's, you know, I, I sort of judged it harshly. I know we're looking at red here, but a lot of the, like, it still works. And it doesn't feel as bad now. And that that's, I guess, another wonderful thing I'm learning with all this is because, the, like, it's not a natural workflow I'm, I, 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 I'm proposing here where it's you're taking swatches and you're filling in flats, right? It's not a natural workflow in terms of painting where it's this is skin color, this is the color it is in this light, put that there, and then this is the shadow color, and I'm going to blend that in. That feels more natural because you can blend and mold. When we're just filling in flats that we've already established before, this definitely starts to creep up as like, you know, you're not going to start understanding it 100% until it's completed. So like I say, even though it's yellow, it actually works in my eyes uh, based off of uh, what we already had. And again, if this is too dark, the shadow, no problem. We can just lower the opacity. You know, bring it back a bit. It doesn't have to be flooded. You know? And that, again, is just a cause of... Whoops. Of this here, right? I could go ahead and just make five swatches. And then we go in there and we pick uh, a different range. See how we get... What I used was this extreme darkness in the middle here. Uh, Would have worked as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up here. Uh, let me just load it up in Facebook. I thought I had it open. I apologize for that. Uh, and again, if you guys are interested in this, by all means, uh, right, right below, there will be a link to the Gumroad. I uh, highly recommend you guys check it out. I'll also include links to the, uh, th uh, I think there's two or three other videos that I had come across when I was doing my you know research on this stuff just to see what's going on. And... Um, there's there's people talking about it on forums I found, but not so much uh, people posting it, you know, and you know that's okay. <laughs> I think just more people need to uh, be brought aware of it, um, and that's sort of uh, why I was bringing it here. Okay, so let's just bring Facebook over here. So this was a very fir uh, first one that I tried, and you can see how the colors work much better here too, right? I didn't do anything except what you guys saw. There's the light that we had, the blue, and I was trying to go with, like, uh, this was a secondary rim light, actually, and once we had it in there, and I should note, too, what you're looking at here, this is the starting point, and you can walk away, but I would definitely go in here and finesse some of this stuff just a little bit, where you can kind of get transitions or, or, like, this sort of thing, like a glow on top of it. And if you ask me, this actually looks really good. It fits into exactly the mold that I was thinking it should, and it doesn't feel like it's out of place at all. Again, I could be totally out to lunch on this one. And the other one was, uh, I did this one uh, the day previous to this as well. Uh, back into the Street Fighter. Hope you guys are playing as well. And I added a second layer. And this is funny. Just adding a second layer of uh, the color here. And you're good to go. And this one, I believe the light was uh, almost this like creamy, creamy yellow sort of color. Uh, and then the rim light was this little blue sort of thing and then like a green was just like the ambient light and it works to me this works uh, and the thing is the amount of work put into it this is the amount of work it took putting in the flats of the character and just messing around with this stuff getting out of your comfort zone and just going you know like I don't know how 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 some of this looks here's a really cool one you know dark strong these are sort of the ones that these come with it when you, when you make the purchase here so I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is actually really cool. This might have been even a little bit more appropriate to what we drew because uh, Jessup is in front of the sun, right? So a lot of him would be dark with this rim light, right? Maybe that's a little bit more appropriate for what we're doing. But yeah, so I wanted to bring this up to you guys. Hopefully you guys are interested in it, at least has piqued some interest. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below if, you th if you're very interested in this and if you did pick it up or if you have used it already, let me know what your experiences are and if there's anything I'm missing out or things that I can do to help use this software better to make my production and hopefully my color and my art better. That, that's the goal with a lot of this stuff, right? So thank you so much. If you're new to the, new to the channel, please have a look around. Um, we do have live streams every Wednesday here on YouTube from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you guys can head on over to any of the links you see scattered all over the screen. Check out my stuff all over there. And if you're 
like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff that everybody, everybody tells you to do. I appreciate that. And even just sharing a video or two on your social media, that's, that's awesome as well. So again, thank you guys so much. Keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye-bye.